So to start this video, I will show things before the new UI took hold. So if we press Q and we go under add modifier, we can jump into screw and we can see that the classic form of the UI was just kind of something that spawned where the mouse was and had a little bit of information on it as well as H to show help. The H to show help was something I particularly had an issue with because people would show me screenshots and I would find their help to be unreadable. So for this reason, I sought to have a newer UI made that was actually more readable and provide more information to the user. So another example to look at is Sharpen. If we go under operations, just run Sharpen, we can see that Sharpen has said Sharpen and that's it. There's no information as far as what has happened, what's going on, and also how to adjust it. For users who are fairly educated, you know that you can press F9 as long as you didn't perform another action. And then you can go inside and adjust your sharpening options and hover over to see what the tool tips mean, of course, and also set your values. So this was something that particularly irked me because I felt that for people who were following tutorials or watching me work, they weren't able to get a lot of information going on here. In fact, most of the time I run sharpen, I run it without changing any parameters because I like to make do with the defaults. But to a casual observer, this is something that would be a little problematic. If we were to go under add modifier and we were to add an array, you can see that the array system, um, once overloaded with text and dealing with multiple arrays, seems to get a little unwieldy. And so I would receive screenshots of this all the time and I would be looking at it just thinking, wow, if they have their UI over a mesh, it becomes more unreadable than if they just have it on a black background. And so, this began a discussion about how we can come up with a new UI solving all the needs. So if you're getting acquainted with hard ops based on previous content, the first thing you'll notice that's different is if we were to say, go into Q menu and access bevel, you can see that bevel looks a little different. In fact, this isn't what your bevel will look like. If I press tilde a couple of times, you can now see what your bevel will more than likely come in looking like. The location of the UI on the bottom is what's referred to as the full UI. You can also press H to show help. But if you press tilde, you can also convert to what's called the micro follow UI, which I call the mouse banner UI. This one's intended to follow the mouse and provide a minimal amount of information. In my case, I will press H to turn off help, press M to turn off mods. And this is generally how I work when I'm not recording. In fact, I could press tilde again and it will actually drop the tool down or drop the UI down so I can move the mouse freely and the UI will not be following me, which can sometimes be annoying. But the goal is to make this more informative, to make the help something that's actually capable of helping people so that when you're looking at it, you're actually able to read it in all scenarios. However, as you're acquainted with the tool, you may not need help to be displayed on screen, giving you back some of your valuable real estate. And also some of this information showing in the full UI isn't actually needed. So that's when you would press tilde to jump to the micro system. Of course, as of this latest update, you can now middle mouse button to move around in the middle of your modal, zoom support coming later maybe. And if we press tilde, we can once again, switch it back to the fuller version of the UI or the um, sitting down version, and we can just rotate the view. The next one I wanna talk about is sharpen. In the previous example, I showed how if you sharpen, it will literally give no information unless you press F9. Now, when you run sharpen, the information is displayed in a nice little frontal banner. This is actually for the people watching tutorials. In the event that you do not want these extra elements added to your UI, which you may not, you can of course, in preferences, turn off operator display also, if you want your UI to come up a very particular way, that is what the UI display method is. For example, in my case, I have it um, set to three, which is stick on mouse original position. The third element of UI is something that's a little bit of a whip. However, I wanted to show it to people early so that they could get acquainted with it. And that is the ST3 system. Our aim is to have a clickable, dynamic, movable, scalable UI that's controllable and, and able to be customized for the particular experience that you're going for. So we talk about standard bevel, which is part of our modal system. We refer to this as the fast system. Um, all of these are components of the fast system. 
meaning that we consider these tools to be kind of sacred in their workflows and we don't want to actually change them completely to be ST3. Imagine if you were to bevel and instead of moving your mouse to adjust your bevel, you had to hold control to begin your bevel. This is something that I found to be one hotkey too many and something that requires further planning and debate. However, at this time, you are of course able to test this and provide your input and give us thoughts. The other thing is that the UI that you're seeing is intended to be themed. So right now we're looking at the fast UI, which is what we call the little micro UI. Whenever you tab into the expansive mode, this is what's called the expansive UI. And we want every tool to have an expansive variant at some point. Our goal is to have users have the ability to launch tools into either the ST3 variant or to launch them into their fast counterparts, which is if you're just trying to work and make it through the day, then you know the fast system is where you where you're at. In fact, right there, I added a new bevel. I'm going to undo that and show it once again, except with the fast UI showing. So we'll control shift click bevel, which adds a new bevel, but I'll press tilde and you can see next to the name of the bevel that we just added that it also tells us that a 60 degree bevel was added. I feel that this is kind of a half measure towards solving the problem that we're going for. I would much rather have it say very large text on the screen that indicates that a new action has been performed in order to assist users that are actually following this content. So if you're a user who is having issues with the new UI and wants to disable certain things like operator text, which comes up under sharpen and C sharpen, which this information I feel was quite valuable to you, the user, to know what's going on. In fact, if we bring up our preferences again, we can go under the fade options or actually operator draw options and the operator display time will change up to 10. 10 is how I intend to run this in tutorial scenarios. So whenever I run this, I'll have the display up long enough for me to talk about what's going on here. In fact, sharpen says modifiers applied zero because I want to really stress the point that S sharpen will never apply modifiers. C sharpen is a form of sharpen that's intended to apply specifically Boolean. So if we control click sharpen, you can see that it tells us how many modifiers were applied versus remain, and also how many modifiers are remaining on this and which ones remain. So C sharp has rules to never apply a particular type of modifier. If we hover over the tooltip, we can see that alt clicking adds a weighted normal. I personally am a big fan of seeing this sort of force feedback, letting users know what is going on with their work and what's going on in the background, because keeping up with the modifier panel is, is one way to work, of course, but that's another level of understanding you would need to have in order to keep your sanity about your scene. My goal, of course, is to be able to work full screen and then eventually just review the information that comes up and deal with it as so. In fact, we can see that C-sharp apply was ran and the remaining modifiers is bevel and weighted normal, the two modifiers that we would never apply. So, you know, um, go on a mental exercise with me and we will go through smart apply. And just imagine if I ran smart apply and did not tell you that any modifiers were either not applied or that two remain, you would think that smart apply smartly applied everything, but applying weighted normal is not intended for the workflow and will result in locked normals, making your next Boolean shade come in inadequate. These same things have also happened with Boolean operations. For example, if we run a difference, you can see that, you know, it ran a difference operation. It tells us that it's sorted and also tells us that parent shapes was off. So if you're a user who is, um, you know, getting used to hard ops by reading the info that's showing, it should do better at giving you um, kind of a heads up on what's going on, what you're seeing. But I just wanted to do this quick video to try to explain kind of the new UI and where we're going with it and also to uh, check for input. I can understand some people being quite salty and negative about some of the recent changes, but it is something that we do have to go forward with in order to evolve for the next generation. A lot of these steps were taken in order to better accommodate Blender towards people who aren't able to press the exact same hotkeys as us, people who are slightly less optimal with um, working in the workflows that we have set up. And once I became aware that we were basically handicapping capable, it, it sparked something in me to begin pursuing a type of UI that's accessible for everyone. And after reading a few pages about this same topic, I feel that we can create a more accessible approach to hard ops that also can help those who are less fortunate. 
So I thank you, of course, for watching this video. I hope to come back and do more content about hops. My apologies about all of the changes that have happened with this, but we are at this 24 hours a day, trying our best to keep this thing working as a premium product should. So in closing, I will go through a quick workflow and we'll just see how the followability of general speed uh, content has improved. And hopefully that was uh, a little bit more followable. I'm hoping to uh, be able to do more content in the future where I'm not having to talk. It appears that talking is becoming more problematic. So I definitely endeavor to uh, create a version of Hard Ops that's able to be followed regardless of the person actually using it. So with that, we'll close this video off and I'll see you guys next time.